guys, we're back once more, and we're with a brand new game. It's in closed beta. I do believe it's in closed beta. If not, it's, it's in beta. Dual universe. Um, I guess you can build ships and uh, build bases and stuff like that. You have to do mining and stuff. I haven't really got too much into this. I just made my first character here. Um... Other than that, I'm not too sure about what's going on, so we're just going to wing it and see how things go. Yep, this is what I want to make. So I... Ooh. A little bit of lag already. That's not too good. That's supposed to be me. Yeah, okay, guys. I had to stop that loading. That loading was really long. Well, recording the loading. I actually had time to go out, mow my grass, take the trash out, clean the kitchen. Uh, just joking. It was pretty long, though. <laughs> okay. Um, tutorial. Basic controls. Okay. Control H. Hide this panel okay uh, skip shift page up exit tutorial okay tutorial um, this button shift and backspace okay evidently we have a thing well walking is is really weird oh yeah that's me I was, I'm green is it behind here or we will we shall see oh I can good I can shift oh it wants me to set down very good now let's try to jump jump you are in perfect shape great let's try your headlight which is very useful in dark areas press the headlight key twice to turn it on and off okay tell me what the headlight oh is it L now, take your time to look at the world around you through the glass panes. This gigantic planet is all yours to conquer, as well as the many other planets in the system. You are free to shape the world as you see fit. Build an empire, explore the vastness of space, create a trade federation or a pirate alliance, or live secluded on a forgotten moon. There are no rules here, except for the ones you make for yourself. No rules. When you are ready, Follow the waypoint and look through the marked window. The buildings in front of you are one of the many district areas of Alioth. Districts contain all the facilities that you will need to begin your journey. In particular, they host institutes where various tutorials are located. We will get back to that later. Let's prepare you for the journey. Head downstairs and follow the waypoint. Okay, guess we're headed downstairs now, guys. Continue down and get close to the screen, marked with the green waypoint. Let's begin with your tools. Tools are located at the bottom of the screen in the form of quick access slots. You can select them with the quick access keys. As you can see, the last slot is currently empty. We will now learn how to equip a new tool in that place. Approach the highlighted tool dispenser unit next to you. Dispensers are elements, which are objects you can deploy in the world. For example, very good. The dispenser just gave you a new tool that is now stored in your inventory. The inventory contains everything you can carry around with you. Let's open it by press. Oops, sorry lady. I just interrupted her. Um, eyes inventory. The inventory is a central interface for managing everything you carry around with you. 
It contains items like tools, materials, elements or blueprints. For now, locate the repair tool that was just given to you, and simply drag and drop it into the free slot below. Well done! Well Note done. that the inventory does not have an infinite capacity, it is restricted in volume. Thanks to the nanopack technology, this volume is pretty huge. Still it is better to keep an eye on the size of objects you store. Now, close the inventory by pressing the close OK. We are now ready to continue downstairs. This time, we will need to use an elevator. Move to the waypoint. Elevators are connected together via up and down links. Welcome to the main room. You can go back anytime by stepping on the same elevator and pressing the jump key to go up. In front of you is a miniature reproduction of the ARC ship. You can perhaps see the real ARC ship through the windows in the distance. Let's try to also find it on your map. To open the map, press the map key. Um, F4 is the map key? This is Alioth, the planet on which you currently stand. You can rotate the planet by clicking and dragging it with the mouse. You can also zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Zoom in until you can clearly see the hexagonal tiling on the planet's surface. Each of these tiles is a territory you can claim. Tiles in red are already claimed. Tiles in purple are non-claimable, and mostly exist around the arc ship. The arc ship is represented by a small icon in the center of the purple tiles area. At any time, you can center onto your position on the map by pressing the center icon on the top left. Try it now. You can also create a waypoint anywhere on the surface of the planet. Waypoints are displayed in your HUD so that they are easy to track. To set a waypoint, simply right-click on a point on the map and select Set as Destination. Do this now. Oh, so, what? I'm, I was looking for a damn spot that wasn't taken up, sorry. Um, a waypoint. Okay, right click it, set a destination. Very good. Next, the selector area here allows you to list your constructs, review bookmarks, and see any available warp beacons or other points of interest. Okay. In the lower right corner, you can find a list of current objectives in a tutorial, usually with hints on how to achieve them. Close the map to continue. Press the upper right close button. You may have seen on the map that certain territory tiles are claimed. To claim a tile, you must deploy a territory unit on the ground. Let's have a look at one. Follow the waypoint. Is that what they look like? Okay. As you can see, it's quite huge. Once a territory unit is deployed onto a tile, the tile belongs to you. This means that you can start to build constructs on it, you can decide who holds rights to dig the ground, and who can build next to you. Territory units are quite expensive and will probably not be the first thing you deploy on Alioth. Instead, there is a simpler way for you to grab a piece of land. Let's discover this now. Follow the waypoint behind you, and take the elevator at the end of the room. This will take us to the observatory. Oh, right there it is. Hope you don't mind I'm sprinting because, yeah. Any one of these three, I guess? Okay, why isn't it working? Go down. Welcome to the observatory. Oh, I, oh, I guess From up. here, you should be able to see Alioth's moons in the sky. One of them is a very special moon called the Sanctuary Moon. We will explain what that means, but first, let's try to locate it. Open the map again, by pressing the map key. Okay. The map also contains a solar system view. Click on the system tab to open it. Here you can see all the planets currently accessible in the system. Select Alioth, the planet where you currently are located, by clicking 
As you can see, Alioth has three moons. One of them looks a bit like a twin of Alioth and is marked with a small shield icon. This is the Sanctuary Twin Moon, or the- Excellent. Now, let's click the Set Destination button. Good. Now, before we leave, let's have a look at the surface of this moon, and find- This Twin Moon, just like Alioth or any other planet, is covered with tiles that you can claim. A Sanctuary Moon is a moon where no combat will ever occur, as it is a safe zone. This oh, means cool. that a territory you claim will remain yours forever, and nobody can take your belongings or build anything there without your consent. This is a great way to create a safe haven to store your valuables and build your home. You can claim only one tile on a sanctuary moon, and you will need a special sanctuary territory unit for that purpose. You already have one in your inventory, so okay. don't worry. Oh, good. Close the map window. Notice how the Sanctuary Twin Moon is now identified by the waypoint in the sky. Yeah. There is a shuttle service, which you will see later, that can bring you there. Oh, cool. Okay, let's get back to the rest of the tutorial. Head down via the nearby elevators. Now is the time to present the key pillar activities that are available for Novians. Each will be presented here quickly and you will be able to discover more about them via the institutes and their dedicated tutorials later. Okay, Follow the waypoint to the mining station first. Oh, we got jet back. Oh. Mining is how you acquire raw materials if you don't simply buy them on the markets. Raw materials are located either on the planet's surface or they can be buried kilometers deep underground. Lovely. Surface materials have a low value, while more valuable materials, from tier 1 to tier 5, are found underground. The surface mining activity is performed using the harvest tool, highlighted in the toolbar below. With the tool equipped, you collect harvestable surface or by targeting them and then clicking. Press the quick access key for this tool to equip it, Usually the first in the toolbar. I did that already. Great. Unfortunately, there are no surface harvestable ores here. To practice, you can access the dedicated tutorial in the Mining Institute. To continue, unequip this tool by pressing the to mine deep underground. First you use the scanner tool highlighted here, which finds available ores in a large radius. Whoa. Once in close range, the directional detector will help you pinpoint the location of the material. Finally, the highlighted mining tool is used to collect the found material. You'll learn more about these tools in the interactive mining tutorial, located inside the Mining Institute. Now, let's talk about the markets. Approach the waypoint. Markets are an essential part of Novian life. This is where you can sell the materials you mine or create, but also buy anything that you might need. Markets are physically located in the world. They are accessible either via market pod units, like the one in front of you, or via the integrated nanomarket interface. The nanomarket interface allows you to browse markets at a distance, but cannot help you to deposit or recover items that are traded. For that, you will need to directly interact with a market pod. Let's have a quick look at the nanomarket interface. To open it, press the nanomarket key. You can search for an item that you would like to trade by using these search boxes. Nitron is a fuel you will often use and frequently buy. Type Nitron in the search box to see the Nitron markets. And we have some. Oh, I d okay, I did that. What do you want me to do? Hit, okay, I'll hit enter. Here are the market orders for Nitron. These are all the intentions to buy or sell Nitron by other Novians on various markets in the solar system. You can pick the cheapest Novian. or the nearest offer, depending on your priorities. You can create your own buy or sell orders or let the system pick the best offer for you. We will look into this at the end of this tutorial, when oh. we will buy Nitron for your speeder vehicle. 
Oh, will we now? For now, let's close the Nano Market interface. And okay. Let's now have a look at another important activity, industry. Go to the industry station, just a few meters to the left. In front of you is an assembly line, one of the many industry unit elements available. These include chemical reactors, glass furnaces, refineries, or smelters. Each industry unit type specializes in certain types of recipes. The assembly line takes ingredients from an entry container, like the one here on the left, and then runs a recipe to craft elements. The elements are stored in the exit container, as seen here on the right, that can be chained as an entry container for another industry unit. The recipes are selected using the industry unit interface. You can learn about that in the dedicated industry tutorial, found at the Industry Institute. Thankfully, entry-level recipes for simple products can be run excellent. Now, let's open the NanoCrafter by pressing the NanoCrafter key. We are going to craft some fuel. Great! This interface allows you to pick a recipe and run it in the background to produce simple products. On the left is a selection area to pick a recipe. You currently have just a few ingredients, which allow a limited set of recipes. Now click on Nitron Fuel to select its recipe. This window shows you the necessary ingredients, which you just retrieved from the dispenser. Simply click on Add to Queue to start producing. Fantastic! Your job is now in the queue and a batch of Nitron will be ready in a few seconds. That will be all for this short introduction. There is of course more to know, and you can go to the Industry Institute to go through the specialized tutorials. Let's close this window. In okay, now let's learn about building, and how you can use all these materials and elements to create amazing constructs. Turn to the station on your right. This bizarre construction in front of you is called a construct. It is a mix of deployed voxel materials used to sculpt a shape, and deployed elements to make it functional. To create a construct you start by deploying a core unit, highlighted here. It will create a building zone, within which you will be allowed to build. Core units come in different sizes, and specializations, static cores for ground buildings, dynamic cores for ships or anything that moves, and space cores for space stations. Once you have created your building zone, you can start to deploy matter, as voxel honeycomb materials, or voxels for short. You have a large palette of tools and materials to help you sculpt absolutely anything you like, regardless of shape or complexity. Finally, you can add elements to your construct, in the form of engines, doors, lights, fuel tanks, or any of the hundreds of available elements that provide functionality to your builds. Building is a vast subject. It is advised to go through the various building tutorials located inside the Construction Institute. Note well, that the building you are currently in, as well as all the other buildings outside, are entirely made with the same building tools. Ooh. As I mentioned, you can also build space or atmospheric ships. Let's have a look at this now. Follow the waypoint to the next station. This is a surface speeder, a cheap and convenient ground atmospheric vehicle. It allows you to move around planet surfaces. You'll be gifted one at the end of this tutorial. Oh, okay. Everything in this speeder is functional and plays a role in making it work. Let's quickly review its different elements. Uh, there's the core. Here are the hover engines, which help the speeder float above the ground. These extra small atmospheric engines are used for propulsion and moving forward. They require fuel, taken from this atmospheric fuel tank. Adjusters are small elements used to create rotational forces and help balance your ship. You also need brakes to be able to <laughs> slow down. And finally, you need a piloting seat to be able to fly it. Activating this piloting seat activates the ship which is how you take control of it. All these elements are orchestrated via a Lua script that is generated automatically for you. But you can also modify it via a right-click menu on the piloting seat to create absolutely any kind of control you like. 
Note that piloting in the atmosphere of a planet or in outer space can be very different, and involves different types of engines and design. Gravity may ground you if you have a heavy cargo on a high-gravity planet, while it won't matter in the darkness of space. Piloting is an art, a subtle interplay between your piloting skills and the craftsmanship of the ship designer. You can learn more about piloting in the dedicated tutorials in the Piloting Institute. <laughs> There's everything Piloting in is not Institute. only about navigating your ship, but will often also involve combat. Look up at the fighter above your head. I've highlighted the weapons that are equipped on this small ship. There are many more types of weapons, ammunition, Ooh. and damage types. Each has a specific role. This is a small fighter, but you can also build giant battleships with a crew of hundreds of people, each assigned to a particular task. There is much more to discover about combat, so you should definitely visit the Military Institute to yeah, know of course. more. <laughs> Now, let's go to the last station and learn about organizations. Follow the way organizations are a fundamental part of your social life as a Novian. They are groups that you can join, covering things like nations, corporations, alliances, or even group of pirates. Let's have a quick look at the organization interface. Open it by pressing the organization key. As you can expect, you are not part of any organization yet. Let's uh -huh. click the search button to find out what are the currently existing organizations. You can search through this list, focusing on open organizations, which are recruiting, or sorting by member numbers, name, or language. To apply for an organization, you need to open its details page. Click on the name of any of the listed organizations to open its details page. Um, let's try to In this window, you can see a summary of relevant information regarding this organization. This area will allow you to apply to join this organization, I along don't. with a place to write a quick introduction. Joining an organization can be a considerable boost for your new life as a Novian. Choose wisely. You can also decide to create your organization from scratch, even if this is a little bit more advanced. For example, managing an organization involves legates and members, rules, voting, and management of rights. This is something you will discover later. You can now close the organ- Excellent! You have covered the basics. Now, let's move to the next step and talk about talents. Follow the waypoint. Where's the- well, oh, there it is. Open the talent window by pressing the talent key. F2. Talents define your character abilities. They are grouped into categories that are displayed all around your avatar in this window. Here, for example, is the mining and inventory. Excellent. On the left is the list of categories that correspond to this group. Click on the inventory manager. Each category hosts several talents. Select the nanopack upgrade. Talents can be upgraded from level 1 up to level 5, by spending talent points. Each level acquired boosts a certain characteristic, described just below its name. For example, here the nanopack upgrades help to increase the size of the inventory by 200 liters for each talent level acquired. The amount of talent points you currently have is displayed on the top of the screen. Oh, Talent points shown here accumulate at a slow rate even when you are offline. Oh. The invest points button allows you to instantly train a particular talent. You need to have enough points for the talent you are aiming for. To accumulate points more quickly, queue a talent. Queuing boosts considerably how quickly you gain talent by increasing the accumulation rate. Let's train the first level of nanopack upgrades. Press the Q Talent button. As you can see, the selected talent now displays in the queue. You can queue several talents to train one after the other. Note that dependencies between talents might exist, and you should train talents in the right order. See how the acquisition rate is much faster during active learning, when a talent is in a queue? It is a good practice to always have several talents scheduled in the queue, to be able to train them without interruption. Cute talents also train when you are offline. 
So, make sure to always have a filled queue that spans a long duration. If the queue ends when you are not online, you will fall back to the slow talent point accumulation rate. Take your time to review the existing talents, and think about how you want to plan them out. You can become hyper-specialized, or decide to be a jack-of-all-trades. When you're ready, you can close the talent window. At this point, you may be overwhelmed by the number of interfaces and their shortcuts. Thankfully, you don't have to remember all that. Let's enter into free mouse mode by pressing the free mouse key. The menu on the left is a quick access to the interfaces. And since your mouse is now free, you can simply click on them. Note that you can also select the tools in your toolbar, and interact with many more menus and options in this mode. For example the notification icon in the lower right part of the screen, which you can now access. An excellent reference is the codex. You also have access to the windowed codex, that you can resize and move. Click on the windowed codex button. You can browse many topics in the menu here. Normally when you leave the free mouse mode, temporary windows are closed. Not the windowed codex. It can be helpful to pin some help content on the side, while you are performing the actions described in it. For now, we are going to close this window, as we need the screen space. To do so, click again on the windowed codex menu. Another source of help are hints. Hints will appear regularly on the right of the screen, depending on your actions. I've triggered a hint for you right now. Okay. You can always find them in the hint window, or by pressing the hint key, so you will never miss one. Okay. Now, close the free mouse mode and return to the 3D view. To do so, Press, let's discover a great activity that is available to you right from the start. Go through the large exits, down the stairs, to the waypoint. Okay guys, I think I'm going to run down here. And I think what we're going to do... Welcome to the surrogate VR stations. Shh, here you can control lady. a remote robot in VR telepresence. This I is don't... a fantastic way to discover other locations and learn about the possibilities offered in this world. Perhaps you can visit a large organization well, headquarters, or play tourist in extraordinary places. Here is the way it works, you can enter a VR station by activating it. Okay. You can then select a destination site, mm. among those that are public and are made accessible to you. You take control of a robot that awaits in a distant pod. Anyone Lady. can deploy a pod in their construct and make it public for visitors. However, as a robot, your capacities are limited, so this is just a way to visit an area remotely. Okay. It is not a teleport. These are fake stations, you cannot use them. But I will show you the real one on the way out, a bit later. Okay. If you look around, you may have noticed those buttons with a question mark on them. They are info buttons. They are placed in front of points of interest and you can press them to display information. Try it now. Activate this button. Oh. Great. The information closes automatically, or you can close it yourself with a cancel key. Another power. Okay, guys. Huh. I think this tutorial has went on quite far enough. I'm going to go ahead and end this episode right here, and then we'll go try to catch on when I come back. Hopefully. So I'm going to log out here. Hopefully it continues from this point. But I didn't want to go too far into this. Boy, that's loud. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, tutorial thing. Because this looks like it's going to be quite complicated of a game to start out with. But we'll get it. Well, it looks like somebody fell. <laughs> okay. Until next time, I want to thank everybody for watching. Please like, share, comment, all that good stuff. And... Catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.